from Hollywood, it's the Good Tom Micah Show. Here you go, boy. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 6 6. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. I'm in one of those moods. I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm a bit cranky, edgy. I've been fighting with people on my street all day long about filming. I've been, uh, you know, filming that's going on on my street. Very annoying. Uh, I've been on the telephone continuously. I drove in heavy traffic today. And um, I don't often... I, I just want to say this. This is uh, has nothing to do with how much money I make because it doesn't matter how far back in my career you go and how little money I made. I have always lived near work. Always. When I worked in Stanton, Virginia, I made $160 a week. I was walking distance from work. I walked to work. And ever since I've been able to afford to own a car, which was after that, which means it's after I was 25 years old, um, I always made sure to live within 30 minutes of work. I never lived more than 30 minutes from work. You know, I have a reason for that, by the way, and the reason is because my dad bought a house in the suburbs and of course if you live in southern california you'll I'll use this analogy that you'll understand imagine you work in downtown la but you live in rancho cucamonga that is literally the distance and the direction my father drove my father drove about 60 miles east to get home from work every night and 60 miles west to get to work every morning. And people who commute in Southern California, and of course we have people listening to us in many, many cities, but I'm just trying to use one example. People who live in Southern California know that a round trip like that is two and a half hours each way, a five-hour round trip. My dad left at 6 a.m. to get to work in Manhattan, in New York City, by 8.30 he got out of work at 4.30 and was on there over two and a half hours and would get home at 7. So he had worked eight hours. He commuted five hours, 13 hours a day just going to and from work and then working. And that was if he came straight home and didn't engage in some of his other activities, which included working other jobs. He was also the head of the union at the newspaper where he worked, and he would be out at night sometimes negotiating contracts for the union or dealing with union grievances. So my dad got home at 7 if he came straight home from work, which he often did not. And when he got home from work, he was cranky. He was no fun to be around. He didn't want to talk to anybody. You ever been with somebody who comes home from work and they don't want to talk? Did you, you, you ever have one of those old school dads who comes home and says, don't talk to me? I don't want anybody talking to me. I had a few uh, men like that in my uh, my family when I was a kid. My Uncle Jerry was like that. And my dad was like that. They would come, my, my Uncle Jerry, by the way, was a peace officer in the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel in New York. And when he got home from... Eight hours of having his hearing assaulted. By the way, he was practically deaf when he died from from years of being in the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel in New York between the Battery in Lower Manhattan and Flatbush in Brooklyn. 
Yeah, when he got home from eight hours, or sometimes he'd work a double shift, you know, to get that time and a half you want to get. When he got home, he literally walked in the house, walked up the stairs, went to his bedroom, closed the door, turned on his 19-inch black and white Westinghouse TV, and he turned on Million Dollar Movie on Channel 9. They also have Million Dollar Movie on Channel 9 in L.A., by the way. He turned on the Million Dollar Movie. And you were not to knock on his door or go in unless you were bringing dinner to him. That was it. And my dad was like that. My dad would come home after commuting all day long. And, you know, my dad, when, you know, my dad frequently got home at 9, 9.30 at night. So he would, he would wolf down dinner. And then you were not to talk to him because he would then repair to his finished basement where he would turn on his 19-inch Philco color TV back when Philco was a brand name. It may still exist. I, some Korean company probably bought it by now, but that was an American TV when I was getting Philco. Turn on his Philco TV, and you you can tell what era this is. My dad, every night, it was Mannix, Hawaii Five O, Ironside, Barnaby Jones... Kojak, every night. It was one of these detective shows. Every night of the week. Every night. My dad always wondered why I never talked to him when I had a problem, why I never... <laughs> why I never came to him with my troubles. Because when I was 13, I would go down to the basement to say, Dad, I had a problem in school today. He'd go, not till the commercial. Not till the commercial. So eventually I just went out and figured, well, if I'm going to learn about sex, I'm going to have to do it myself. And that's what I did. I learned by doing. I learned by doing everybody I can get my hands on. <laughs> God forbid I should interrupt Hawaii Five O. to ask about that. Thanks, Dad. So, yeah, he was, he was cranky from the commute, and so today I am cranky. I'm just cranky. I, I And by the way, I don't get... I'm not cranky and edgy as often as probably the guys I work with would like me to be, because they, they love it when I get cranky and edgy. They like the way the show sounds when I'm cranky and edgy. But honestly, I learned a lesson from watching my dad doing all his commuting, and that is, I never live more than half an hour from work. And currently, I live 15 minutes from this here place. Place I'm not allowed to tell you where we are. 15 minutes away. That's it. But today, I had an unusual day. I was just spending my day arguing with people about the filming that's going on on my street. And I also spent a good part of my day on the freeway. I was driving down to... Uh, to shop for appliances. This is about 11 o'clock this morning. I need appliances. I'm redoing my kitchen at home. So I had to drive down to look at appliances. And of course, you know, in the Hollywood Hills, there's no appliance store. So you have to like, you have to like leave the cocoon and you have to actually venture out on a freeway. In my case, I had to drive down to the South Bay uh, to gawk at some appliances. And so there I was in LA. It was raining. And uh, traffic was slow. And, you know, I never see traffic like that. Never. Never. I talk to people who are in traffic, like you right now. But I'm not in traffic. That's your job. I just talk to people who are in traffic. So today, suddenly, I was like you. I was in my car in traffic. Creeping down the 405. So I've I've heard rumors about the 405. I know there are people like you who drive it or roads like it. I was on it, and it wasn't even rush hour. It was you know, about 11 o'clock this morning. I was on the 405, creeping along. Then I had to creep back north. That was my day. And my phone is ringing, you know, because I, I don't have time for this. I don't have time to drive to the South Bay and look at appliances. I really don't. 
I have to sit on the phone and argue with city officials about filming in my neighborhood. So I'm in the car, I'm cranky from the traffic, and then I'm on the telephone arguing with location uh, managers and production directors and uh, governmental officials. I'm yelling at them in my car, and I'm trying to, to work my way through. So I am just at my wit's end. I'm cranky. Um, now, I would say I'm not in the mood to be here, but the boys would disagree. They would say this is when I do my best work, when I'm cranky and angry and edgy. And, you know, I must say that internally people worry. You know, they worry when I get pay raises. They worry when I get a bigger contract. They worry when I'm buying 20-acre spreads up in Santa Barbara County. They're worried that I lose some of my edge. Now, you take a day like today, and the edge is right there. It's, it's, it's always lurking somewhere. Today it has come to the surface. So in this particular segment of the program, I'm... Uh, Going to give our screener, Dean J. D'Amelio, the hour off. <laughs> Not so loud, Dean. We can hear you. Going to give him the hour off, and I'm going to talk to unscreened callers this hour. Because I'm just in that kind of mood. It's all about the unscreened callers. Why, why screen them? What's the point? I'll deal with you personally. But just remember... I've had a lousy day, so when you call in, you better be ready. Lightus. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Can you name five things women are good for? Yes. Cooking, cleaning, <laughs> ironing, packing my things when I leave town, <laughs> preparing my documents for when I leave the country. It's the Tom Lightus Show. That is our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. Okay. Here we are with on-screen cars. We do this every now and then, but I have to be in the right mood for it, and today certainly seems to fit the bill. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Who's this? Who is this? I said hello already. Uh, you, how many times will you say hello? Hey, I'm just calling to find out why you got a problem with filming on your street. Because it's constant and it never stops. All right, well, you realize that you're in the film industry, right? Well, I'm really not in the film industry, uh, only peripherally. No, when your listeners are people in the film industry, that means you are too. Well, no, it does not mean that. It means that my customers may work in the film industry, although most of them don't. Yeah, well, most of them might not do, but some do, and that drives your paycheck. So why don't you Well, no, it, it really doesn't. My paycheck is driven by the large number of listeners I have, most of whom are not in the film industry. Right, but some are. So whatever percent it is, you could allocate that percent of your paycheck to the film industry. I'm not allocating any part of my paycheck to the film industry. Well, you should, because that's what would be, would be accurate. Well, why don't you allocate part of your paycheck to the radio industry? Because I'm not in the radio business. Well, I'm not, I'm not in the film business. Yeah, you, you are. Everyone in Los Angeles is in the film no, business. No, we're not. Uh, no, we're not. No, we're not. No, we're not. Southern California, the primary uh, business here, the number one industry is aerospace, not film. Doesn't matter. People that work in the um, aerospace. You've really got an arrogant attitude, sir. And uh, the fact is, the entertainment industry is an infinitesimal part of the economy of Southern California. Well, in Los Angeles, it's a big part of the economy. Actually, it's not as big as you say it is. It doesn't matter if you're a dentist, maybe some of your clients are. It doesn't matter. The fact is, with that writer's strike, I just skipped merry along, merrily along here, and it really didn't affect my business at all. I'm sorry you broke up. Go again. Mm, I've had enough. Uh, hello. Hey, Tom. Yeah. What's up, man? I got a, a partner listening for the first time up here in Dallas. That's good. Yeah, and um, he's his girlfriend's all the time trying to get him to marry her. And I was telling him you might set him straight on that subject. I put him on the phone. 
Oh, no, he's listening. I mean, he's in another truck. All right. Don't right get now. married to your girlfriend. Hello? Hey, I just want to talk to Tom. All right. Okay? Okay. Okay, great. I just want to agree with him on the job he's doing. He's, he does a very good job when he's pissed off, and I really want to uh, agree with him on that. I mean, agree with you guys on that. All right, I'll tell him. Hello? Yes? How about you? Hello? Hello? Yes. Hey, I hate this film and stuff. Plug me in with this guy. He's uh, already gone. You're listening in delay, sir. Hello? Hello? Is it Tom? Hello? Yes. Hey, Tom. Uh, I had a question about, you know that girl who, who, who urinated on your patio? Yeah. I wanted, to, I wanted to get an update on that. I'm going to hire her to urinate on the patio of the guy who's doing all the filming. Actually, hello. Hi, want to talk to Tom, please? I'll see if I can find him. Hello. Hey, Tom, how's it going? Pretty good. Oh, I'm, I'm there with you, man. Two and a half hours to get to work today on the friggin' 405. So you know what I'm talking about. I am in. I'm in the same kind of mood you are today. I want to kill somebody. There we go. Oh, it's horrible. I, I, I totally sympathize with you. And I'm sitting on the 405 right now. You get me home every night. That's my job. And I appreciate it, but uh, the tra one drop of rain in this town, and people don't know how to drive. Well, of course, because we don't have a lot of rain. Yeah, but everybody's got to slow down. Not that they're driving that fast normally, anyway. I know. My average, you know, my car does one of those things that uh, it has every kind of gauge and every kind of kind of gadget. Uh, my car has the average miles per hour I drive. Do you know what the average is when I'm here in L.A.? Fourteen miles an hour. I was going to guess that, yeah. That's the average, 14. I mean, speed limit on the streets here is 35. I have, 14 is my average. I'm going 45 right now. I'm at Skirball on the, on the 405, and that, that's, that's, that's unheard of right now. This is actually pretty good. But this morning it was two and a half hours uh -huh. for an hour drive. I was on the 405 this morning. I feel your pain. Hello? Hello. Let's try you. Hello. Hey, Tom. Tom. Yes. Hey, I uh, I actually I have kind of a unique marriage situation. I want to run past you. I'm a um, I'm a new stand-up comic. Uh, my soon-to-be wife is studying to be a doctor. Um, I know you're kind of categorically against it, but but we're both getting a little bit older, and I wanted to see like what you think about my situation. If it didn't work out in California, am I one of the guys that you talk about that should step up and take money from the lady if if it doesn't work out? Absolutely. So you think I should? Of course. Okay, so, you know, because, I mean, I've heard the numbers on your show before, like 51 to 54% of the... the Are you kidding me? If you, st if you stay long enough, you can get half of her practice. Really? Oh, yeah. That's beautiful. All right. So I recommend taking like, anything you can get. Me me being an up-and-coming stand-up comic, would she, like, if it were to happen where I would start making more money before her... Would she then be entitled to take what what I make if I didn't make anything before we were married? She would, but the odds are that won't happen. <laughs> Thanks, bud. <laughs> I'm here to help. <laughs> I appreciate the vote of confidence. Well, I've, I've I've been around the comedy business, and I see how many Chris Rocks there are and how and many how, of the other guys. And how many me's there are. I don't know you, but I'm sure well, I've seen your equivalent. <laughs> well, hopefully one day I'll be in studio with you, pal. Hopefully. Hello. Hi, Tom. Yeah. How you doing? Okay. Uh, uh, Long-time fan. Uh, I just wanted to say I work downtown, and uh, the thing that bothers me about the filming isn't so much that the people are walking around, because there's always a lot of people downtown, but the thing that bothers me is that the fact that there's, like, always a cordon of police protecting it rather than protecting me. <laughs> you know, so, like, oh, wait a second, you know. Come on. Well, I think those guys are off-duty or they're being paid, like, overtime or something. <laughs> Um, I hope so. I think that's the deal. I'm being fair about this. Yeah, I I, I, uh, I tried your Valentine's Day method of going to a bar on my own, broke up, you know, with my girlfriend. and <laughs> That's good. And, and I went there, and I sat there for a couple of hours, and I drank a Coke. I think I spent about $4, but... Um, I wasn't. I, I, I was. I wasn't approached by a girl because I wasn't sure if you. Well, I did say on the air that on that day is the exception of the rule. That's the day you can go in up and approach somebody because any woman who's alone is going to do something she's going to regret the rest of her life. But but I mean it's okay uh, to go up there and say hi. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right? In fact, I would recommend it. 
Yeah, I didn't do that. Because when a woman when a woman wants to do something, when a woman is going to do something, she's going to regret the rest of her life. I want to be the cause. Exactly. So I sat there, and there were a couple of uh, girls like looking over in my direction, and uh -huh. I was thinking, I, I, I just, I guess I misunderstood your rule. No, on the, that you the, the rule you have the rule right, but but on a day like Valentine's Day, you just jump right in. Yeah, I got the next time, next Valentine's Day, or the next uh, what's the next big holiday? Christmas? Well, let's see. I guess it would be. Um, Oh. Yeah, well, yeah, not Easter. <laughs> not Easter. No, not Easter. No. Oh, not, not Fourth of July either. No. The big, the next, I guess no. the next big one is Thanksgiving, right? No, I don't even think Thanksgiving. I think, well, yeah, you could try, but the Thanksgiving bars are dead. The time to go is Christmas Eve. Yeah. Oh, yo, here's another one. Halloween. Ah, yeah, Halloween. Halloween is good. Yeah, because they were looking at me like I was fresh meat, you know, and I was, like, looking at them, and they're looking you at me. You were you know, fresh like, meat. Yeah, and and, uh, and I was thinking, well, did Tom say that I'm? Are they supposed to come up to me, or am I supposed to go up to them? No, on that night you can go up to them because they're so pathetic. They they need you to, you know, when they're feeling lower than than well dung, you have to go up to them. Hello. Hello. Yes. How are you doing, Dad? Doing okay, son. Oh, yeah, right. well dung. Yes, I said well dung. Yes. <laughs> That's pretty time low. Listener. Yes. Long time listener, uh, second or third time caller. Um, I feel your pain as far as L.A. is concerned. I'm, I'm in Vegas, and uh, we are rounding up on uh, quite a similar problem. I think our, uh, our state bird's going to be a road cone because of the high winds we get out here. They're blown all over the place. This morning is a prime example. But it, I, I really think it's the retards in office that uh, just uh, – you know, somebody's a friend of a friend, but nobody really has any idea of how to fix uh, traffic problems here and in L.A. I used to live in Southern California when I was in the Marines. And uh, I, I really think we should uh, get a team of guys from MIT. These are the guys that send probes to Mars and people to the moon. Why can't we get a, a team of these guys just to figure out how to fix the problem? That's my, my honest belief. We need to just recruit some guys that are total brainiacs and and concentrate on it and not well the brainiacs here in la have decided that uh uh pico boulevard and uh, olympic boulevard are going to go one way during rush hour yeah and, and one-way streets down, i've driven down the 405 uh going to lax i've driven down there and um you know i was stationed out in 29 palms but had to make the unfortunate journey to uh la a couple of times and it was just a nightmare and then living in Vegas, I, I was a cab driver for a couple of years. I'm falling asleep here. Hello. Hello. Yes. How's it going? I'm doing okay. Uh, what's, uh, I have to say long time, first time. Can you turn up the radio a little bit? I can't hear it. Sorry. Uh, long turn it time up a little louder. <laughs> long time, first time. Um, every day we listen to you on the way home. Good. You're, God, you're godsend. Thank you. I have to say, every single day we listen to you. That's good. Keep it going. I'm 20 years old. I live by what you by what you say, and what can I say? It's it's perfect. Well, I couldn't agree with you more. Let's just stop there before you wrote it. Hello, Tom. Yes. Hey, I got a question. I think you might be able to help me with. Okay. Why is it when a woman doesn't want to have sex with a man for headaches or she on the you know whatever the rag yeah. It's, yeah, it's it's all nice and wonderful and fine, but when a man doesn't want to have sex with a woman, it's World War Three, for whatever reason. You know, maybe you're tired, maybe you work too long, but it's World War Three, and it's oh, I'm going to leave you, and you don't love me, and you're cheating Great. on me. Why is that? Any time a woman tells me she's going to leave, I say the door is right over there. <laughs> well, I was, I was. It's just like the perfect why. crime. I tell you what, get going. Do you have a hit the bricks? Why? Huh? Why, why Why? can women have that pass and men can't? Well, again, you know, when you insist on being married or in a relationship, uh, this is what you're going to get. Hello? Hello, Tom? Yes. Hey. I really don't have an opinion at all on your film situation, but I had a question, rather. I wanted to know what was the update on that crazy woman who called into your live remote a few months ago in Arizona? Well, that was actually uh, the, the over a year ago. Okay. And uh, but we never got the final report from uh, the police uh, in Phoenix, and uh, uh, we're gonna we're gonna call them one last time. We're gonna make one last run at them, and then if they don't give us an answer, I'm gonna tell you what we know. Okay? Because okay. I'm done. I'm done keeping that a secret. Hello. Hey, Tom. It's Ira. Ira. 
I'm okay, Ira. I just want to say I was... How old are you, you, Ira? Yes? How old are you? I'm uh, 48. Okay, because there's no Iras under the age of 40. There just aren't. Well, what can I tell you? Somehow that name uh, slipped out of the uh, consciousness. Yeah, but it doesn't keep me from being a listener. Are you an accountant? No, I'm actually a designer. Okay, just checking. <laughs> was... Good name for an accountant, though. Yes. <laughs> or an attorney. That's right. Well, I just want to say I saw you down shopping for appliances today. Oh, you saw me. There you go. Yeah, and you looked like you were in a bad mood. You were talking away on your cell phone. I, uh, yes, I was very cranky because I was talking to the people about the uh, the film shoot on my street. Yeah, you walked by me and I said, that voice sounds familiar. See, I, I don't make that stuff up. I know. It's, it's They're they're pretty uh, pushy people. No doubt. Hello. Hi, Tom. First time, long time. How yes, you doing? doing okay. Hey, I just got a quick question for you. I was wondering, uh, what's the best bar to pick up chicks in Dallas? The best bar to pick up chicks in Dallas? Yeah, I know you were here pretty often. Uh, well, I've when I was there, when, now, see, I, I, it seemed to be losing some of its buzz, but the, the the last time we were at a bar that was great to pick up chicks was uh, Dragonfly. Dragonfly? Is that downtown or uptown? At, at Zaza, downtown, yeah. Hey, appreciate it, Dad. Here to, here to help. I'm the Human Zagat Survey. Hello. What's up, Tom? Not much. I've been listening to you for a while, and I appreciate what you espoused because I've been doing it for about a decade. Well, good. Now, that, that came from me falling in love with a stripper who was sleeping in the same bed that I was sleeping with her and then me finding out. So ever since then, I've been kind of a jerk to women, and they love it. Glad to hear that. So anyway, on to my point about the film industry. The guy who called you talking about the film industry right. had a lousy point. Yes. But with, here you go, Tom. You're like the guy that moves next to a racetrack. And then complain. I don't live. I don't live next to a racetrack or a movie studio. I live in a residential neighborhood, buddy. Hello. Keep up the good work, Tom. I will. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hello. Yes. Hey, Tom. Hello. <laughs> Was I just talking to you? Okay. Hello. What's up, Tom? Yes. How you doing, man? Great. Hey, when you come up to Santa Barbara. I'm, I'm in Santa Barbara all the time. I own a house up in Santa Barbara County. Uh, you need to make a state street appearance. We love you up here, man. We listen to you all the time. You, you, you're you not listening to me on the radio, though. You're listening to me on a computer. Somebody told me that uh, the UCSB students listen online. Is that correct? That's how I'm listening to you on, at work right now online. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, I'm going to have to do something in Santa Barbara because we're hearing from a lot of people ever since I said I was buying a place up there. Uh, we love you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I got the wrong number. Uh, you certainly have. Hello. Father. Yes. How are you doing? Great. Great. I do make that commute from Rancho Cucamonga to El Segundo every day. Uh, so you uh, you, so you know I know what I'm talking about here. Yes, it's horrible. It's horrible. I know. The traffic on the 605 is, is ridiculous. The 605, the 210, all of them. Terrible. Horrible, yes. 105, there's always an accident. Can't, can't get to work on time. It's horrible. I know. It's horrible. So, uh, thank you for that. Can you take me out, uh, blow me up? <laughs> That's it? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I want to talk first about the 167 pound nine. I don't buy that for a minute. No, I don't either. I think you've got to be druggly. You've got to be drunk and ugly to get her later on in the evening. Drugly. <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show from Hollywood. Having a great game day. So I'm just doing uh, unscreen calls this hour because I've got, the, I think, the right temperament for that. Hello. Hello, Tom. This is Ira. How are you? I'm fine, Ira. I'm wondering where I could get a good bowl of matzo ball soup and meet Jewish girls in this town. It's the Tom Likas show. Hello. <laughs> yes. Hello. Hello. Okay. Hello. Tom. Yeah. Hey, I feel your pain, man. I drive that 50 miles each way every single day, so I feel it, man. I understand. Hey, can you take me out, Sean Taylor, stop? 
What would that be? Uh, that would be a door opening, a swish of a knife, a gunshot, and a bitch. I don't know if we have all that. Can you can you just give? I'll get. I'll see what we got. Bitch. <laughs> One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Thank you so much for tuning into the Tom Like His Show. Let us continue here. Hello, hello. Okay, sounds good. Hello, Tom. Hey, I want to thank you for getting my balls back. Thank you for that crazy bitch. Thanks, sorry. I really appreciate that. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, the Tom Like His Show. Hello, Is Tom. There. Let me check. Hello? Yeah. Hello? Hi, Tom. How's it going? Great. First, first time, long time. Yes. Hey, I'm, I'm really disappointed at these women calling in, and uh, they're not back in their own. And for the longest time, I've heard, oh, women are just as good as guys. Well, hey, this is the time for them to prove it, and I'm not hearing a whole lot of support, and I'd really wish I'd hear some somewhere. Uh, okay. Hello? Father. Son. Dad. Son. King. Okay. Hello. Hello. Can I talk yeah. to Tom? You could. Uh, I just want to tell that I meet a girl in the, uh, the club, V2O, Saturday night. And All right. Hello. Uh, is this Tom Michael Show? Yes. Is this Tom? Yes. Tom? Yes. Tom? How many Hello. times do I have to say yes? Hey, Tom, I wanted to talk to you about... Uh, Did you hear me say it's unscreened calls? Yeah, I heard that. Doesn't that mean when I pick up the phone that it's going to be unscreened? Well, that's what I figured. I so why would you assume someone else would talk to you first if the calls are unscreened? Well, um, because I, I wasn't sure if it was you or not. What man. do you think unscreened means? Oh, uh, whatever, man. Come on, I wanted to talk There's to you. There's no screener! <laughs> I pick up the phone. means I pick up the phone, and this is why we have a screener, you see? I understand you're in a bad mood, Tom. Come on, give me a break. But I warned you, and you called in anyway. Well, I had a delay on the radio that I was listening to. Oh, please. Hello. Hello, Tom. Yes. I was wondering if you've ever considered going to Thailand for vacation. <laughs> no, uh, why? Have you been? Yes, I was there for three weeks. Uh, you can stay in a four-star hotel for less than $100. The food is delicious. The, the, o the ocean is very warm. And the girls do anything you want as long as you bring some Skittles? It's yeah. Hello. Hello, Tom? Yes. Oh, this is this Mario? Yes, yes, Mario. I have a question, Tom. Um, first of all, your show is the best. Um... I'm from Mexico. Yes. And uh, this is pretty much like the best show I have ever heard in my life. My English is not that good, but with your show, I learned a lot of English. Oh, so tell us some of the English phrases you learned here. Um, Tom, the bitch. <laughs> and and uh, uh, pretty much just phrases like that. Phrases like that? I, I just practice almost every day with, with your phrases. And... Uh, <laughs> And I really love it. So you've been practicing your English listening to the show. So when I talk about women being skanky whores or... Uh, there you go, whore, bitch, and, and, and words like that. Words like that? I need to buy no, no English course with your radio. Uh, pretty much all the English I know. Yes. Yes, I'm uh, going to put out my uh, new Spanish language CDs. It's going to be uh, you learn English from uh, from the master. There you go. Yes. And you're the number one. I would like to tell you one more time. Number one show. Thank you for that. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, can you take me out uh, the Mexican style? Mexican style? Yes, I can take you out Mexican style. Here you go. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're teaching languages here now. Language skills. It's the Tom Lanka show with unscreened calls. Hello. How you doing, Tom? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. I got the perfect cure for you, Tom. One, uh, long toke of the kush. <laughs> <laughs> Is that all it takes? Miller Lite. Kush, kush in the bush. <laughs> and a Miller Lite. Take me out, uh, Tom. Yeah, um, do you use Miller Lite as bong water? Is that what you do? 
Uh, no, Tom, I did not do that. Some people I know do that, but I just was... checking. <laughs> Take me out. Uh, first time ever the double bong toke uh, with the choke followed by a Mexican style, please. <laughs> <laughs> One eight hundred. Whoa! It's one eight hundred five eight hundred. Some of these are so long. Uh, hello. Yeah. Hello. 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 Yes, with him doing, um, they're doing pictures and the girls and all this, and so all of a sudden they're taking up all the street. And um, what's the thought on just renting out a bunch of cars, parking them on the whole street so they have no place to park? Somebody suggested I have a big block party. Just get all the neighbors together. And I've had a number of offers to uh, people are offering their yipping dogs. Uh, one guy offered to drive up and down the street with a dog. That it, uh, somebody has a dog, they're at their wits' end, like they were thinking of taking the dog to the pound. But instead, they've offered to drive up and down the street with the dog. Bingo! Who won't stop work. barking? About, I'm sure you have a lot of friends up there that have these nice boom boxes in their cars. Yes. You know, my thought was more on the par of a good night sleep after hearing that these guys shut down at one in the morning and you just rent up a bunch of cars shut the street down they're all your cars you're all rentals you know they're cheap little cheap cars but nobody can park there they can't do anything that day and you get a good night's sleep well there you, everybody's thinking there hello what's up yes i was just calling i have some great news and some bad news you lost a, a seven-year listener you just got married but I'm a new student listening to Tom Likas from now on, man. I'm trying to get my balls back, you know how it goes. Why'd you get married? No, I didn't get married. I'm 18, but, you know, I'm trying to get my act together. I do have a girlfriend. Why do you have a girlfriend? Yeah. Why do you have a girlfriend? Why? Why? Because you got no game. I guess so. So the only way you can get laid is by pretending you're in love with somebody. Probably, man. And then she'll get pregnant, and then yeah. you'll end up doing the right thing and marrying her. Oh, okay. And then later on, when I need an oil change, I'm calling you. Oh, man, that sucks. You can change nah. the fluids in my car. No, nah, I'm trying to go to school, though. <laughs> yeah, what school? Uh, trade school. It's called the UTI. There we go. And what, do you, uh, what trade are you studying there? Uh, mechanical. Mechanical. Yeah. So you will be putting oil in my car. That's very good. <laughs> trying to get into that BMW. I like pens oil, by the way. Huh? Pens oil. Yeah. Oh, man, you're using the wrong oil. You should be wearing a castle. <laughs> See, you're, I'm already a step ahead of you there. Hello. Hello? Yes. Hey, Tom, how are you? Pretty good. And I do care. And I just wanted to say, if it wasn't for you, I would be still be wasting my time fighting with my boyfriend over a B. And you make me understand him, and now our relationship is better than ever. And I actually listened to you on Valentine's, and I finally broke the whole buying him everything and going all out. And now he's accusing me of cheating on him because I didn't buy him anything for Valentine's Day. I didn't call him for Valentine's Day. And he is just, like, all over me now thinking that I'm, like, seeing some other guy. Great. What time could you get here? <laughs> uh, actually, I'm leaving work right now. Just let me know where the studio is, and I'm on my way. Perfect. See, he was right. He was right, for God's sake. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Why do you have a screener, Tom? Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com.